Hello and welcome to Garage Files. Every episode, we take one nominal band from garage rock history, breaking down their story, their sound, and their impact. Today, we're talking about Mr. Miserloo himself, Dick Dale. were nothing less than revolutionary time for music. In fact, I can think of no single decade more powerful, more impactful, and more packed full of great musical artists. From the Beatles to Led Zeppelin, the Beach Boys to The Who, Janis Joplin to Jimi Hendrix, Bob Dylan to Simon and Garfunkel, the list goes on and on. But before all of these artists had a chance to dig their claws into America's youth, one man was single-handedly well, double-handedly, causing rock and roll waves straight out of the Southland from Newport Beach, California. The garage king, the inventor of the Orange County sound, the king of surf itself, Dick Dale. <laughs> In 1946, Quincy, Massachusetts, a seven-year-old boy named Richard Anthony Monsoor was beginning to tinker around with a ukulele that he'd been awarded for selling a winning number of jars of Noxzema skin cream. Now, of course, the ukulele wasn't the best and he had quickly saved up enough money to replace it, but it did propel this kid's burgeoning love of music. Half Lebanese and half Polish Belarusian, Mansour's family lived among an Arab population in Quincy, and Arabic music had piqued his interest greatly. But of course, like any young American boy at that time, Mansour loved the music of Hank Williams and dreamed of one day becoming a, quote, cowboy singer himself. It wasn't long before a friend of Mansoor's offered to sell him his guitar for $8. Now, of course, Mansoor jumped at the chance and agreed to finance the sale by paying his friend a quarter or two a week until the guitar was paid off. Because Mansoor was left-handed, he restrung the guitar backwards and played it upside down. Thus began Mansoor's epic journey with rock guitar. At 17, Mansoor's family moved to Southern California and Mansoor began playing in country bars. And it's there that he met Texas Tiny, a man who gave Mansoor the name Dick Dale because, well, he thought it was a much better country singer name than Richard Anthony Mansoor. And it was. Soon enough, the newly dubbed Dick Dale was drawing huge crowds at local gigs on the Balboa Peninsula in Newport Beach, so much so that he rented out the Rendezvous Ballroom and started throwing his own shows, which were raucous, loud, and packed. So let's talk records. Dick Dale released his first single, O oh Wee Marie, on his self-published label, Deltone Records, in 1958. But it was his first original recording, Let's Go Trippin', that took the Southlands by storm and is widely considered one of the first surf songs ever written. It went 
to number four on Los Angeles radio and number 60 on national charts, drawing kids from around the country to hear the Orange County sound. In 1962, Dick Dale and the Deltones released their first ever full-length record, Surfer's Choice. It gained them enough popularity to play on the Ed Sullivan Show, where they premiered their most notable track to date, Miser Lou, a song that could be considered the greatest surf song of all time. From there, Dick Dale and the Deltones made appearances in Hollywood beach films like Muscle Beach Party and Beach Party and Back to the Beach, maintaining a firm grasp on youth culture in America until a certain mop-topped tidal wave passed over the nation in 64. But the true story of Dick Dale is in his sound. Dick played a Fender Stratocaster electric guitar and a reverb unit with the signal split between two Fender Dual Showman amps. His desire to incorporate drum-like rhythms led to a rhythm lead combo style of picking unlike any other. His Arabic influences and Middle Eastern scales created a sound that was both beach party friendly and eerily haunting. But perhaps most notable was his quest to achieve massively loud, soaring tones, drenched, submerged, even drowning in reverb, which sparked a powerful friendship that would change the face of rock and roll forever. You see, in 1960, Dick Dale met another Orange County local, Leo Fender. Leo was creating electric guitars and amplifiers, and his namesake would end up being the singular name in musical equipment for years to come. They became quick friends, and Leo Fender gave Dick Dale his latest Stratocaster and amplifier, saying, quote, beat it to death and tell me what you think of it. But Fender's amps just couldn't hold up to Dick Dale's power-heavy guitar force. Dick Dale blew out the speakers of the Fender amplifier. So, of course, Fender gave him another, and then another, and another. Dick Dale eventually blew out the speakers of 49 amplifiers, some of which actually caught on fire. All this until Leo Fender finally had the bright idea to create an 85 watt output transformer that at full volume peaked at 100 watts. This was exactly what Dick Dale needed. It should be mentioned that this didn't exactly end here. Dick Dale did eventually blow out this amp too forcing both Dick and Leo to go back to the drawing board. But it was this mad scientist fuels super monster dynamic that furthered Fender's endeavors into perfect amplification and could be considered responsible for the music technology we all use today. Dick Dale's sound is one of the most unique sounds in garage rock history. It is completely distinguishable from its counterparts. And his guitar style has influenced other great guitarists like Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan. His driving rhythms and looping melodies create epic moments in films like Pulp Fiction. And the original soundtrack for Disneyland's best and tallest roller coaster, Space Mountain although in 2006 they did change the music. What are you doing, Bob Iger? That said, Dick Dale is unlike any other. No other artist even comes close to replicating his sound, a sound that refuses to take a back seat. Whether it's the driving, hyperactive adrenaline cool of Miserloo, or the slow, strutting shimmer of Oasis of Mara, Dick Dale's music is an emotional hijacker because Dick Dale's sound is profoundly atmospheric. There is no escaping the transformative grasp of its mood-altering ways. 
It is simply, well, surf. So here's to Dick Dale, the man, the master, the king of surf. Thanks for watching.